What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Toyota Sequoia, specifically the TRD Pro. New trim level for 2020, by the way. So I am obviously super excited to be in this thing. This is a very large SUV comparable to the Ford Expedition Chevy Suburban, SUVs like that. So if you have a large family, this is definitely one to consider. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Sequoia. First one being the SR5, starting at $49,905. TRD Sport, starting at $52,620. Limited, starting at $58,915. Platinum, $65,945. And lastly, the TRD Pro, again, new trim level for the 2020 Sequoia, starting at $64,030. And so for this first four trim levels with the exception of the TRD Pro that was pricing for the rear wheel drive variant if you wanted to go the all-wheel drive setup which is the four-wheel drive setup actually simply add three thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars to any of those prices and so but regardless of trim level that you go with power plant on this new Sequoia will be the same powering this beast is going to be a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8 putting out 381 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 401 pound-feet of torque available at 3,600 RPM, power center rear wheels or all wheels to a six-speed automatic, giving you a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.5 seconds, which we will test out in a little bit here, with MPG numbers coming in at 13 in the city, 17 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel, AKA 87 octane. And so now having mentioned all the specs, I think you guys know what time it is, let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration in our new 2020 Sequoia and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed <laughs> yeah buddy <laughs> honestly this is a v8 it pulls pretty freaking hard absolutely no issues with merging onto the highway or anything like that in this Sequoia again it's a 5.7 liter v8 yes this is a heavier SUV but so what it's a v8 I keep saying it Plenty of acceleration in this thing. Really, zero to 60 and 6.5, it's pretty darn quick for an SUV. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.9 inch front discs in the back, 13.6 inch rear discs, course power assisted four wheel disc brakes on this thing as far as the braking feel goes had absolutely no issues certainly brings the Sequoia to a very nice stop coming up in this red light for instance right now absolutely no issues there touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone front suspension with gas filled shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar in the back independent double wishbone rear suspension again gas filled shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar and now the suspension is really one of the key aspects where the trim levels will make it very vastly different. For instance, if you go with the TRD Sport, that is going to add performance tuned Bilstein shock absorbers and a performance tuned anti-sway bar. It's a little better off-road setup there. Platinum trim is actually going to add an adaptive suspension system, which essentially is going to monitor each shock absorber individually, not only soaking up the road imperfections, but also tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds. So if you wanted more of a luxury ride, go with the Platinum because adaptive suspensions, no matter what manufacturer you go with, are really where it's at there. And lastly, the TRD Pro is going to give you even more of an off-road setup, giving you TRD Fox shocks and upgraded springs as well and these shocks again they're upgraded and they're larger than all of the other trims so in theory this should also improve ride quality both on and off-road actually and as far as the ride quality goes since i keep mentioning it ride quality has been perfectly fine quite honestly i've had no issues riding in the sequoia here definitely feel like this would be a nice long road trip vehicle going down to ocean city or something like that so definitely no issues with ride quality steering feel it's pretty much as expected honestly i would say it leans towards more of a heavier weighted steering wheel which for me at least is a good thing i do like a heavier weighted steering wheel but overall it's pretty much as expected not too loose not too heavy it's pretty much just right there as far as cabin noise goes it's definitely on point there as well and when it comes to visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back and honestly with the shape of the sequoia you really shouldn't have any issues with visibility so another benefit to the visibility 
legs, because the Sequoia is a little bit wider than most other 3 row SUVs, those rear headrests actually are kind of pushed to the sides a little more to give you even better visibility. So that is definitely a plus as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. All right, you guys, here it is the 2020 Toyota Sequoia three row beast. Let's take a look up front first here. 10 inches of ground clearance will come standard across the board for every single trim level. That is actually quite a bit for comparison's sake. Since I just reviewed the Telluride, that is going to come in at an even eight inches. Sequoia has 10, so it is a little bit more than most other SUVs out there. Up front, first thing I wanted to mention to you guys, if I can get underneath here enough, TRD front skid plates specific to the TRD Pro trim level. Found that pretty stinking cool. Most people will never see that, but this is a more off-road capable SUV and I'll go over that as we go, but TRD heavy duty skid plates down there. And in addition to that, if you guys were curious about what the color is that you know we do have today is actually army green exterior, in case you wanted to go that route yourself. But when it comes to that front grille, it's actually gonna differ slightly dependent upon the trim level that you go with. For instance, you will find chrome horizontal bars if you were to go with the platinum, black horizontal bars pretty much for all other trims, including the TRD Sport, SR5 and Limited, and you have that Toyota horizontal lettering if you were to go with the TRD Pro that we do have here today. Then make your way to the side a little bit. Headlights. LED headlights will come standard for every single trim level and that will come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out they're going to turn on automatically for you there so you never have to worry about that. Also LED fog lights will come standard on every single trim level as well and they will be rigid LED fog lights specific to the TRD Pro. Um, otherwise, you still get LED fog lights, but they're not rigid LED fog lights. That is, again, just for the TRD Pro that we have here today. But let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's make our way to the side on this one. Low profile roof rails will come standard. They are going to come in black, specifically for the TRD Sport and chrome for all other trims. But the TRD Pro, because that TRD Pro is going to give you raised black roof rails with horizontal bars. Let me see if I can get an up top shot for you guys here. So that is definitely a pretty cool setup up there to put kayaks or snowboards or whatever it is you want to put up there, but pretty cool and specific to the TRD Pro actually. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard on all trim levels and then making our way to the side mirrors. Body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors will come standard for all trims and they will come with integrated turret signals for the limited trim level and up and they will be auto dimming and power folding for the limited trim level and up actually as well. And then looking all the way to the bottom, I guess I should mention TRD Pro lettering found on the front doors. That's just specific to this trim level, of course. Running boards, since the Sequoia does have 10 inches of ground clearance, they are important. It is a little bit of a step up in this one if you did not have them. So they're actually gonna come standard across the board. Once again, they are cast aluminum running boards if you were to go with the TRD Pro. And actually they got TRD lettering found on the back portion of them as well in case you guys were curious. Next thing I wanted to mention zooming out when it comes to the wheel setup, 18 inch five spoke alloy wheels with the SR5, 20 inch alloys actually for the TRD Sport Limited and Platinum trim levels and they're gonna vary in design but 18 inch BBS forged aluminum alloy wheels with the TRD Pro. That of course is what you're looking at right now. They're gonna come with the black finish with TRD center caps. Definitely a cool look and a BBS forged wheels, that is cool. And they're wrapped in Michelin tires, of course. But then making your way to the back, there is actually a shark fin antenna up there. It's kind of black and incorporated into the roof rails in case anybody was curious. But nonetheless, rear spoiler with the integrated brake light will come standard. You will find a rear window wiper just below that. I love the black accents for the Sequoia and the Toyota badging back there as well. And that's of course specific to our TRD Pro that we have here today. As far as the taillights go, they will all come with that smoked look. So that is kind of nice as well. TRD Pro badging found in the lower right hand portion of that rear lift gate there. And I did want to also mention you do have a towing setup with the Sequoia that comes standard. It's a tow hitch with four and seven pin connectors. In case you were curious, the towing capacity on this beast comes in at 7,100 pounds if you did plan on going ahead and towing with the Sequoia, but to the right of it all, a single exhaust outlet. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
And so now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, you will actually get a power lift gate if you were to go with the limited trim level and up. There is actually a button on the key fob, so I am actually just gonna simply press that and therefore the tailgate is gonna open up for me. As far as cargo capacity goes, this one is kind of interesting on the Sequoia. Behind that third row, it is gonna come in at 18.9 cubic feet, which actually is not as much as the Kia Telluride I just reviewed, coming in at 20 cubic feet behind that third row, but yet is still a larger SUV. So it's kind of interesting. And for comparison's sake, even more, the Chevy Suburban comes in at 39.3. Expedition Max comes in at 36 cubic feet. Nissan Armada, 16.5. So it is kind of interesting that it is a little bit less behind that third row, at least, comparatively speaking to like the Expedition Max and Suburban because here is why behind the second row it comes in at 66 cubic feet behind that first row 120.1 cubic feet which is right on point with the expedition max and suburban with the expedition coming in at 121.4 suburban 121.7 nissan armada 95.4 so with all rows folded it is just as big as the suburban and the expedition max but behind that third row it's not and that's kind of interesting to me, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and move on. You will get a little bit of in-floor storage back there as well as some grocery hooks. I always like to mention that. Making our way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 35.3 inches for the third row, which quite honestly is excellent. Perhaps that's maybe the reason why there isn't as much cargo space, but that is an excellent number for third row legroom for a reference. I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I have back there. And also for comparison's sake, the Suburban comes in at 34.5, so it's got that feet. Make our way to the second row legroom. That is going to come in at 40.9 inches. Again, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Plenty of space for me. And by the way, when it comes to the seating configurations, it is a seven passenger configuration if you were to go with the TRD Sport Platinum or TRD Pro. And you can seat eight passengers with either the SR5 or limited trim levels, in case you were curious there. Rear ventilation can also be found for all trim levels. That's going to be found on the roof of the Sequoia there. I did want to also mention an option here. There is a rear Rear 9 inch Blu ray player with two wireless headphones that can be had as an option for those rear passengers if you wanted it. Then make your way to the front seats. Eight way power adjustable driver's seat with a cloth finish will come with the SR5 and TRD Sport. Ten way power adjustable driver's seat is going to come with the Limited, and that is also going to give you a six way power adjustable passenger seat with a leather finish. And the front seats will therefore be heated as well with that trim. Platinum, in addition to that, is going to add a perforated leather with ventilated front seats. And lastly, the TRD Pro is going to remove that ventilation, but then add a black leather with red stitching and TRD Pro stitched into the headrest actually as well. That's a pretty cool feature there, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Toyota logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch. So to go ahead and start this one, there actually is keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels. So therefore all I am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. Then when it comes to the gauges, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center, which by the way, can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. And that's gonna give you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer, average MPGs in any given time. There's a compass up there, radio information, safety features when you need your next oil change and the list goes on. So quite a bit of stuff available with that digital display there. Then taking a look at overall interior quality, Power moonroof is actually going to come standard for every single trim level. Home light controls will come with the limited trim level and up, and they're going to be found for up to three different garage doors located on the rear view mirror there. Overhead sunglass holder, also standard for every single trim level. Three zone climate control, also standard for every single trim level. And another thing I first noticed when I got into the Sequoia is they have dual glove boxes. Of course, you got your standard glove box at the bottom. That's pretty freaking normal. But there is also an additional glove box kind of incorporated into the dash. It's almost hidden, but there is another glove box just on top of the traditional glove box. So found that pretty cool as well. Also in typical Toyota fashion, because I forgot to mention it before, that rear window all the way in the very back can be lowered completely by simply pressing the button just beside the driver's right knee there, but that gives you even more visibility. Also lets in fresh air into the cargo area. So I found that pretty cool, especially since this is kind of an off-road SUV. It is pretty cool that that rear window does indeed lower with that button. So that's, that's always nice. But as far as all the rest of the buttons go, there's actually your 
your four wheel drive circular dial just in front of the shifter. There's a tow haul mode. Then all your climate control information, your heated seats are actually gonna be located just underneath of that climate control information. Bunch of USB charging ports, three of them to be exact, 12 volt power outlet up there as well. Couple cup holders to the right of the shifter, actually three cup holders to the right of the shifter. Then there's a small little area you can actually put the key fob if you wanted to directly behind the shifter. And then you have your massive center armrest, which if you open up provides you even more storage and a ton of it. And it's compartmentalized, so there's a bunch of different cubby areas. And on the back side of that center armrest, there's a place for a pen, there's a tissue holder, and a business card holder as well. So a bunch of stuff going on back there. And I always like how Toyota labels it tissues, meaning you have to put tissues in there and you have to put business cards in there and nothing else will do. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on the Sequoia here. And so perhaps this is maybe one of the areas where I wish Toyota improved upon a little bit more, although they did improve upon it actually for 2020. Seven inch color touchscreen display will come standard across the board, which will include Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that is a new feature for the 2020 Sequoia, by the way, and that gives you free navigation essentially through your smartphone, all you do is hook your smartphone up to the Sequoia via USB cable and therefore you have free navigation as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. And there's a couple other compatible apps up there as well. Factory navigation system is gonna come standard with the limited trim level and up, although you don't need it with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can also, of course, check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, the sound system will differ based off of the trim level that you go with. You will find eight speakers with the SR5 and TRD Sport trims, 12 speakers with the limited, and lastly, with the premium and TRD Pro trim levels, you will find a 14 speaker JBL sound system with an external amp and a subwoofer. So I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Definitely more than enough of a sound system for the Sequoia. Plenty of loudness, plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. It's JBL, they always do it right, so. Well done, that sound system was definitely on point. Last thing on the tech display though, I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Sequoia in reverse, of course, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, when it comes to safety, front side, side curtain airbags, also driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there. Also standard for all trim levels though blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert that doesn't always come standard for all trim levels so that's definitely nice front and rear park assist also toyota safety sense for all trim levels and this is going to include a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert automatic high beams and dynamic radar cruise control and so but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there feel free to check out the merch below the video if you wanted to support the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold